Well, hello, hello, fantastic, fabulous artists. I hope you are all having a fabulous and fantastic day. Welcome back to the Art Life Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Folsom. So, so excited and grateful um, to be here with all of you. Thank you so much to all of you who are tuning in every week, downloading the podcast, sending me emails at info at Art Life with Kelly, K-E-L-L-I, dot com um, about what you thought about the podcast episode and also ideas for future topics that you would like to hear me discuss. Um, So thank you so much. I really appreciate every single one of you. And together, um, I hope that we are working together to make the world a much more amazing place through the power and beauty of art. Um, Today is episode 15. Yeah, yeah. Yay, yay. Okay, so today, um, today's topic I wanted to talk about um, something I've really seen artists struggle with over the last uh, 14 years that I have been, and myself included, I struggled with this as well, especially in the very, very beginning um, of my art journey. And this is, it's the masterpiece trap. So <clears throat> I'll just share some examples of this. Uh, but whenever I first got started as an artist, um, as I mentioned in the last episode, um, I was just signing up for a few classes here and there, and um, I was really getting ahead of myself <laughs> in my art making. I had such high expectations for my art, and um, every single piece of art I was really like trying to make this perfect piece of art right off the bat with very little know-how, very little knowledge or understanding, very little skills or practice. And I would just agonize and agonize over, you know, one drawing, let's say, for example, because at the time I really wasn't doing painting. I was still just doing drawing. And so I would sit and like work on one drawing for hours upon hours, days upon days, you know. And um, and then what ended up happening was, of course, that I wasn't seeing Um, fast progress because I was taking too long to work on one piece of art. And so this is what I call the masterpiece trap, like trying to make so-called masterpieces, perfect drawings, perfect paintings, perfect art before we are ready, Um, before we have, you know, we don't we don't even have the training wheels off yet, you know, like we're now just getting at the beginning, you know, um, growing as an artist, we're still wobbly with the training wheels, you know, so it's kind of like trying to take the training wheels off before um, your child is ready and they immediately just cry, they just keep crashing and burning because they haven't built up like any understanding, any knowledge, any strength, any wisdom, any experience. Um, and so that is something that's very, very dangerous, especially for artists who are just starting out because whenever we don't, when we have too high of expectations and we take too long to try to, you know, produce that masterpiece and then we're, we're seeing that it's amateur level or it's amateur quality of work, even after all of our struggle, what ends up happening is we quit. We give up on ourselves, we get discouraged, we get disappointed, um, we get super frustrated, you know, and it's so painful when we have these super high expectations too early and we see that we're not matching up to what the vision is that we have um, and and then we it's too painful and we quit or we take way too long in between making the next piece, right? So there's a really wonderful example of this um, that gets talked about in the Art and Fear book. If you've never read that or if it's been a long time and you are struggling with this, I would definitely pick it back up. But they give a really great example in that book about quantity over quality. And my, so, so I did, I was stuck in this masterpiece trap for a couple of years, taking, you know, classes here and there. I wasn't really making a lot of art. It was very random. 
Uh, I was making, you know, I was trying to do like big elaborate things too soon. And then this is what was happening to me, this effect of like frustration and, and then self-doubt and feeling like I wasn't good enough, like I didn't have what it takes. And then as soon as I um, enrolled in the art college, we were making a lot of art and a lot of new art, like every single day. <laughs> so we had one painting class, which was an eight hour painting class. And we, we would complete a painting in that time. And then the next week, the instructor would set up something totally different. Now, in all honesty, it probably would have been better if we were painting like eight small studies in that eight hour block of time, right? <laughs> but, but even that was so much faster than what I had been doing. Completing one painting in a, was that eight? No, six hours. It was a six hour class, like nine to noon and then one to four. So six hours. Um, but even that was like, wow, I'm making so much art. Like one painting a week was what I was making the first semester. And then we would have a drawing class that would be the similar, a similar thing, right? Six hours of drawing the figure or, um, no, actually at that time it was just drawing, drawing still life. Um, but same thing. So, um, so I started to realize like, oh, wow, the more work that I complete that isn't, you know, trying to be like a perfect masterpiece. Like I'm just focusing on the fundamentals and trying to learn and trying to get better. You know, the more progress I was seeing faster. So the more work I completed in a shorter amount of time, the more progress I really started to see happening in my artwork. Um, it was the same, sculpture was the only one that was different because, you know, we would work on one sculpture for weeks upon weeks upon weeks, you know. It's a little bit more of a laborious, drawn out process, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, years later, I also saw this um, with other artists that I met, other art artists that I came into relationship with, contact with that they also really struggled um, with this masterpiece trap. Um, I remember this one art school in Oklahoma that Monty and I would go to to do figure drawing. And um, this was just, you know, maybe about seven or eight years ago. And I would, it would sadden me so much walking around that studio because a lot of the artists would have the exact same painting um, up in their studio space. So all the artists had kind of like these little small cubicle studio spaces in this little studio slash school atelier. And week after week, month after month, I'm telling you, almost year after year even, <laughs> I think, um, a lot of the artists would have a piece of art on their easel that was in the exact same stage as it was uh, weeks prior, months prior. So, so I was like, clearly they are in this masterpiece trap. They don't know how to finish this painting or they have totally lost interest in it. They're so like in this masterpiece trap trying to make this perfect work of art that they're not making any art. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's like, what? Um, you, you get so wrapped up in this perfection um, and trying to perfect this one masterpiece that then guess what? You end up not making anything. Does this resonate with you guys? Have you experienced this? Maybe you're already past this and if you are, then that's fantastic. But um, I know I went through this. I've seen so many artists really get stuck there and never get out. It's like a prison. You know, they, they get sucked in. It's like a black hole. <laughs> they get sucked in and they never come out. And then they, they stop producing art or they produce it very, very intermittently. And when I say intermittently, like maybe they make a couple of paintings that year. Um which is not enough paintings to get better, period. So the quantity versus quality example in the Art and Fear book is really beautiful because they did a case study with um, a pottery class. So they told one pottery class that they were going to be judged, uh, graded on um, the perfection of one pot. 
So their aim was to try to make one perfect pot, right? And um, that's what they were gonna be graded on was this one, how perfect this one pot is. So they worked and worked and worked trying to come up with this perfect pot, create this perfect pot. And um, the other uh, class was told, you're going to be graded on the quantity of pots that you produce. Um, nothing to do with um, the quality of the work, just you know, produce as many pots as you possibly can. And it's interesting because it really is just a psychological factor that comes in. You know, um, it's not that whenever you're doing quantity of work that you're being sloppy either. It's just artwork takes repetition. It takes repetition to build the skills. You know, it is a physical act. It's something that we do with our our hands, with our brain. Everything's working together, right? And then with whatever the natural material is that we're working with. I mean, we we have to learn the language of painting. If we're painters, we have to understand the pigments. We have to spend enough time working with them so that we can understand what oil paint can do. We have to work enough with our palette knives and our paint brushes so that we can understand what they're capable of, what we're capable of, and even just to gain dexterity and control with those tools, you know, with those wooden sticks with hair sticking out the end, <laughs> you know, with those hairy sticks. We have to gain physical, um, a physical adeptness with them. And the only way that we can really do that, much like riding a bike, is, you know, hopping on the bike and, and riding every day, you know, not worrying about, uh, have you ever noticed even whenever you were a kid trying to learn to ride your bike, like almost like the more perfect you tried to be, or let's say, for example, learning to play an instrument, uh, the more, the harder you tried to force um, yourself to do it right, to do it perfect and correct, like the worse it was. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you started thinking like that, like you would fall off your bike or fall down on your roller skates or miss that note on the piano. Um, it's some, I don't know what it is. If you guys know what that phenomenon is, then of course, please email me at info at artlifewithkelly.com. I would love to I, this is some kind of real thing that happens in the human brain, and I'm not sure um, what the phenomenon is called. Surely there's a name for it. But um, it exists, and um, it, it's interesting to me that, that it exists, number one, and that so many artists just keep butting their head up against the wall trying to get a perfect masterpiece when that never, ever, ever works. So especially if you're an artist that's trying to learn and build your skills, it's really important um, if you are at that level that you are really going for quantity, you know, doing a lot of work, going from start to finish on your paintings. So once I got into art school and I started seeing this happening, um, basically I started by year three, I started thinking, how could I speed this up even faster? You know, how could I speed up the quality of my results? Because here's the thing, whenever you get a lot of quantity and a lot of time invested in, then the quality naturally starts to show up. You start building on the past painting um, and improving. So I actually recommend a lot of artists to do speed sketches, you know, speed studies, speed paintings, paint smaller and paint them faster, go through the whole process from start to finish much faster. So I basically doubled down, doubled down on this idea whenever I was in art school because even, even finishing a painting in six or eight hours, um, I would I would be trying to do like a big painting in let's say six to ten hours roughly somewhere in there depending on the size and so I would spend all these hours invested and then at the end of the painting I would go oh now I see okay this was off or the size and placement was off or the proportions like I remember one time I had a <laughs> one time I had a painting where I thought oh this is the best painting I've ever done and then at the end, I looked and my grapes were the size of my oranges. So like I had totally missed the proportional relationship between the grapes and the oranges. You know, I just started looking at the grapes and they got bigger and bigger and bigger.
and bigger. Um, so anyways, that being said, um, at that point, I started realizing, you know, in my comp, I, one big thing for me was my compositions. My compositions for still life were not very good. And, and that's a challenge with still life if you don't have a natural eye for composition. So, so I thought about this quantity and time thing again, and I, I really tested out this idea of, well, what if I were to do, instead of one painting in eight hours, what if I were to do like eight small paintings in eight hours, right? Like one painting an hour. Um, and so I put, put myself through this test. I had a large panel and I gridded it out to, I think it was like 16 small little four by six um, studies. And um, I set up one painting after the other. It took me a couple of days to do all of these studies. And let me tell you what the progress that came from that in my understanding of what made a good composition, um, also, it just, it got me to like the cream of the crop, so to speak, um, so much faster. So, so if I would have done those 16 paintings, you know, what, 10 hours a piece or even six hours a piece, you know, you're looking at a hundred hours or more of investment in time and time. Oh my gosh, time is our most limited resource, right? So when I ran the numbers of that, like if I were to do, um, you know, 10 paintings at my normal speed, my normal rate, you know, I'm looking at 100 hours investment or I can get the same learning out of them by setting a timer for an hour or less and doing a little five by seven or a six by eight or something much smaller that I could really work out the idea and go through the whole painting process from start to finish. So really increasing um, increasing that practice, really increasing the amount of practice I was getting in. Because as you know, every single painting that you complete is really building on that practice. So it's totally different than just trying to complete one painting over, let's say, 10 hours versus one painting and 10 paintings in 10 hours, right? So um, there's just something about that, something about the decision-making process, like you're just building that muscle so much faster. Um, so this is something that I really, you know, have encouraged uh, the artists who work with me, who study with me also to do because so many artists just get really sucked into that masterpiece trap they're not producing very much, therefore they're not learning very much, they're not progressing, not growing very much because of that. Um, and so for example, in Vital Art Sessions, you know, that's why I make all of my um, lessons are 30 minutes, you know, um, because you don't, first of all, like most of us can't concentrate for two hours watching a painting lesson. <laughs> and, um, so, and it builds in that repetition week after week for the artists who are in that program, um, is that they at least get to do that one finished painting every single week, which helps them build on their skills so much quicker. And hopefully they're doing more than that or have time to do more than that is the ideal situation. Um, so basically I've passed that on to all of the artists who I have worked with um, in that, you know, it's just letting them know like it's not good to shoot for that masterpiece you know too early now once you get to like a mastery level or even a, a more advanced or higher intermediate level of skill then you know you can start you know going larger or um you know coming up with with concepts that are really more thought out and thought through um, and, you know, making those masterpieces, so to speak. But it's interesting because I, there would be, I don't think there's any way that I could paint the larger paintings today that I do or have done if I didn't do that for myself, if I didn't go for quantity over quality. The reason why I can paint paintings like that is because I painted a huge quantity of smaller paintings. Um, so let's say, for example, if you're trying to just learn about a new genre, 
Um, you know, for example, lately it's fall here, it's October, and I have been going out and doing a ton of plein air painting. So you can, if you're trying to improve in a, another genre, um, you know, then apply, you might have mastery level, let's say a still life or a portraiture, but you want to learn about, you know, painting seascapes or painting landscapes. Um, or vice versa, paintings. If you're if you're adept at landscape painting, um, painting still lifes, learning about still lifes, right? So you'll want to apply the same methodology of doing a large quantity. I think of smaller works um, that are really um, they're beautiful. And many of them turn out gorgeous and amazing. So I don't even see that they're lower quality most of the time. But, um, you know, they're smaller. And a lot of times people think, oh, well, it's just a small painting. It was just a small little painting. And I have to caution you uh, on that too, because sometimes really great things come in small packages, right? Like really beautiful, gorgeous, amazing works can come in really small packages. So the size does not matter, as they say, right? <laughs> um, so for me, like this month, like I said, I think I've done about 40, 40 little six by eight plein air studies. And, you know, I've mostly just been doing it for my own enjoyment, just for the joy and the fun of it, which we should always have whenever we paint. Um, and I really don't have a desire to take any of them um, larger to do a studio landscape, so to speak. Um, so, but it is such a great method to use to really, really improve your skills, um, grow faster, and you build on those small wins every single week. Um, so again, so that way you avoid that masterpiece trap of getting discouraged, getting defeated. You've got all this time investment and it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to. So whenever you work smaller, faster, get more done in a shorter amount of time, it also really, really builds your confidence. So I want to challenge all of you, if you are in that masterpiece trap, if you are low on confidence, if you are defeated, if you are discouraged, I'm going to challenge all of you to try this. Try it out. You know, sometimes you have to do different things to get different results, right? You've got to, if, if you're not happy about the results that you're getting, you have to try different strategies, different tactics. And, you know, you can't worry about what anybody else is going to think about it, about what any, how anybody else might judge your work or anything like that. Like, that's just BS. So if you're in that place, I really want to challenge you and um, inspire you to try this method out. It is has massively improved my art life um, from a very early time. Um, in it and it's always been proven to work for me it's been proven to work for the hundreds of artists that I work with in the vital art sessions program as well so it's I think it's the fastest way to see progress the progress and the results that you um, want to see okay everybody until the next episode I'm wishing you all happy painting happy creating and um, I will see you next week bye